A week before the uh, earthquake and tsunami, I was in Tokyo and I was at Hiroshima on the Science Council. So I had just left Japan when I learned about the uh, earthquake and then the tsunami, which caused such a tremendous loss of life. O up to 20,000 people died and villages uh, were destroyed. Uh, ships were uh, brought up on the land. Uh, it, it was terrible. And it was so much so there was a lot of humanitarian efforts right afterwards to try to save the people. And then the reactor started melting. And uh, it was early on, it was a concern and there were hydrogen bubble explosions. Uh, the containment hadn't been breached, but it did release a few days later radioactivity, you know, into the environment. And so there was then great concern about what this all meant. And uh, with regard to the United States, with regard to the Japanese citizens, with regard to the world on this exposure to radiation. And during that time, I was interacting with my Japanese colleagues, you know, about uh, the first thing was to get the reactor under control. That was the most important thing. And that didn't happen until December of that year when it was in cold shutdown. And so there was always this concern of the three reactors then having releasing more and more radioactivity in the environment. Fortunately, and this was the thing was what the Japanese did, they did everything properly. They sheltered in place. They restricted the food supply and then they evacuated people. And so during this evacuation, because of the concern of a very serious event, uh, the people left their home and there's probably about 150,000 people were evacuated on those that lived near the uh, Fukushima reactor site. Uh, the evacuation was not without harm uh, because there were ill people. Although this was in February, uh, it was actually quite cold uh, uh, there at that time and uh, there was uh, 60 to 70 people died because of the evacuation with hypothermia not being able to get the medical care that they had there was this trauma that was actually associated with the uh, life-saving uh, efforts and evacuation and there's many um, uh, stories not stories you know real episodes where some of the the patients that were evacuated who had uh, normal illnesses like diabetes or uh, ulcers and then they needed additional care once they had left the contaminated areas, um, uh, many doctors turned them away. Many of the hospitals turned them away because of this fear that they may in fact have been radioactive and somehow they would contaminate other people. And this was of course very, very inappropriate and the people had been screened after leaving uh, uh, Fukushima and actually had yellow passports saying, I'm clean, you know, there was no detectable activity. If there had been some uh, radioactivity on their clothes, uh, they were showered and, and uh, a change of clothes was provided. So, but still, even through this process, and it was physicians, radiologists too, it just wasn't the general, you know, population. And so the exposures to the populations and even to the workers was relatively small and uh, will not result uh, in adverse effects. Nonetheless, one of the big issues that we have today with the Japanese and uh, the people that were evacuated uh, is the psychological effects. That the effect of being evacuated, the fear of radiation is causing mental disorders, which are real health effects that are occurring now, not some theoretical effect of uh, radiation-induced cancer that may occur 20 or 30 years from now. There's no question that there's still uh, a fear, a, uh, a perception that radiation is more hazardous than it actually is, and also a perception that the individuals around uh, the Fukushima reactor did receive such high doses uh, of radiation that in fact they will be harmed or their children will be harmed. And this perception of, uh, of risk uh, is causing serious uh, uh, mental problems within the population. What we've learned in the radiation uh, protection community, as well as from the Japanese, is that these, uh, this fear of radiation has been going on for a long time, that there is no threshold for fear. It doesn't matter if you had a high dose, a medium dose, or low dose, there's this fear and anxiety that is affecting you and your lifestyle. This has happened around Three Mile Island, where there is no dose to the population. But there is tremendous anxiety even today because of this fear of radiation. 
around Chernobyl even today, particularly among the women that were pregnant around the time of Chernobyl, and this fear that's raised anxiety and health concerns. And now in Fukushima, they introduced this new term for the young couples, the young couples who are evacuated with children. Uh, they're they're being uh, receiving divorces at a very high rate, and they coined this new term, uh, atomic divorce, uh, that takes this into account. This inappropriate fear of radiation uh, so it's sort of like and these are real effects that are happening right now two years after an accident where there was hardly any dose to the population and people are suffering there's anxiety lifestyles are changing they're smoking more they're drinking more uh, uh, the children uh, that have been evacuated are experiencing a stigma because supposedly you know they've come from uh, Fukushima and they are some some ways unclean or inappropriate and you don't deal with them. It's a very, uh, very difficult uh, circumstance. And this is said too in this background where the Japanese have the top scientists, you know, in the world knowing about radiation effects, but even they were not able to express to the public, to the other professionals in a way that could have a calming influence. So we need to do better in education about radiation. Uh, we need to do better even on the terminology. You know, if you read the newspaper or the media, it'll say deadly radiation was released from Fukushima. Uh, hazardous uh, radiation was gotten into the environment. And But no one ever uses the term like when you go to the doctor and you're cured of cancer from radiation, say the healthy radiation. Part of the problem was that the government and the scientists and the media did not communicate properly and effectively to the population at the time of the reactor accident. And even now, these two years later, it, it's a, um, a major concern, uh, this lack of understanding, the lack of communication, lack of education. There wasn't a good communication uh, to the public but also, it, we learned that the doctors, the scientists, uh, the so-called experts uh, should have a better understanding of risk, and they didn't.